Yo, what up, guys? Beside you here. There's a whole lot happening in Raid Shadow Legends today. In this video, I want to talk about everything without having to record two, three, four, or even five different videos for you guys. So I'll put timestamps in this video. I'll remember to put timestamps. So in case of anyone you're interested in, you can just skip ahead to it. I'll start off with the fresh information you might not have heard of because it's starting 26th tomorrow we'll have a one plus one event where you pull one legendary champion you get one for free this time around you will be able to do it from ancient shard so you, this type of event is only for players who know how close they are to Messi, which is you pulled about 150 ancient shard plus and you've not yet gotten a legendary you're getting close to that 200 mark 220 mark you know that's what this, these uh, events are meant for so if i quickly check my rsi hopper to see my messy pool for ancient i'm just three shots in so i'm not even anywhere close so this event will be not for me and of course players going for a fusion would not be interested in this one except it falls within the fusion calendar right so i'll be taking a look at the fusion calendar to break it down the new champions that are coming out everything in this video will try to top touch on everything that raid has dropped on their player base today being a monday all right so that's the first event one plus one event is only for players who know how close they are to that 220 plus ancient shard mark and you'll be able to get one legendary for free if you pull one this event does not boost your chances of getting legendaries it's still going to be a one percent but i'll see on the fusion calendar if it coincides with that fusion event tomorrow being the 26th right when this event will launch it will last for 72 hours as they say and yeah the second legendary you get will be a different one from the first one you get and of course it will the second one you get will not count towards any events and tournaments that are going on it will not give you points towards that those type of events so that's the first one they announced it will also coincide with a 15x event for some you know epic champions and legendary champions that are all new to me i looked at their names and like who are these champions and i'll pop them on the screen right here for one slot while you're summoning your shots for that one plus one event you have one slot to add a tribune heracles and uh, a morrigan is old champion badel kaza and Masha Mashal. so that those are the champions available for legendaries just one slot though and then for the epic category you can slot in a sika vogot or a gorgorab any of those champions that calls out to you that might you might need for faction wars or something that's the event that is coming up it, it this also coincides with a chance a booster chance of getting um perfect souls from your altar or soul summoning so this is one of the best time to actually summon your um mortal soul stones immortal soul stone and this time the chance of getting perfect souls will also be boosted for a tunnel soul stone 2x boosted chance of getting perfect soul from these soul stones that you've been saving so far so the um five and six star perfect soul from mortal and immortal will be boosted so five and six star will be boosted and then from this eternal it gives you six star so it's going to be a six star perfect souls from eternal soul stones chance two x chance will be boosted also so this might be your best time if you're not saving it for any particular reason of course on my main account i'll go over there and summon all my mortal soul stones i might even have more than that saved up that i can just do tomorrow 26th when that event launches for sure that's when i'm gonna summon this mortal soul stones and see what i can get from it from my wish list that event is kind of you know not that you know popular but it's the best time you have to be prepared for it and then they say please note this boosted applies to souls rank regardless of rarity so it's not just gonna be for epics legendaries even if you get six star rare soul stones <laughs> when you get them from this um soul stone summons anyways that's the next event that is coming up after the one plus one ancient event now the next one is this skeletal chase seven day login champion which we did not hear about until this morning where we logged in and we see a skeletal chase right here in game login for seven days straight you can even skip some days ahead and you get this legendary champion who is new to raid and i'll be looking at his skills because everybody will get him for free and this is the one i'm most interested in to see whether it's going to be a game changer for newer players game changer for end game players or only be one of those ones that we just get and throw in the vault and never spend books on because they are trash we'll take a closer look at this champion skills he is known by um the i don't know which with cooperation but basically this is a cartoon character and it has been in a lot of players childhood I, it kind of dates their age so i'm not gonna say i know <laughs> this champion or not but basically 
we used to watch them when we were kids as cartoon characters and now they are in great shadow legends there's something to say how they are weaving this character storyline into the storyline of teleria it's not matching the law everything is not matching it's just like spider-man is coming into iron man is coming you know universes are colliding and champions who are not supposed to be in raid are finding their, their way into Raid Shadow Legends somehow, some way. Through. They are cool and all, but in terms of storyline, storytelling, it doesn't make any sense how this champion makes his way into Teleria. It doesn't make any sense. But hey, we are all playing a fantasy game and everything goes. Nothing, um, no rules cannot be broken and of course, partnerships are being made. And yeah, we are getting this new champion. So if I go into this champion's skills right now in-game, you'll find this champion in... On Dead Hot's faction because it's Kalenti, right? And where is it? Long time is not on Dead. Did I get it wrong? Let me see which faction this champion is. By clicking on the 14-day in-game right here, you can find it. Um, info. Where is it? This champion right here. Okay, Night Rev. Night Rev, really? Okay, I thought all bone faces like this were from <laughs> on dead hearts anyways on this champions a1 he attacks one enemy each hit has a 75 percent chance of increasing the duration of a random debuff on the target for one turn it's a hundred percent chance of increasing the duration of one random debuff hundred percent chance of increasing random debuff duration by one turn so that's gonna be Two ton du increased duration of a random debuff. It's not that it's not that useless. It can be useful against bosses where you don't have the chance to place debuffs more on them, and you can increase duration of HP burn, increase duration of decrease defense, decrease attack, so you can survive longer against those type of bosses, right? That's where this type of A1 can be useful. But against wave content, it's not useful at all. Against arena, it's not useful at all. So I'm thinking against bosses. Let's see what else. A2 um, on the A2, he attacks one time, one enemy has a 75 percent chance of placing petrification debuff on the target for one turn that's the debuff that makes you you know like frozen like you can't do anything for that entire turn just like um what's her name now i forgot her name the champion will get from the hydra you know the way she makes you petrified when you when she places hex on you and you hit somebody so that's the debuff it's not quite popular it's not a debuff that a lot of players a lot of um, um champions have in raids so seeing a new champion getting this debuff is gonna be good but he places it he doesn't have a condition that happens before he ha he places it he's just gonna take one champion basically out of the battle it won't work against bosses of course so if the target is a boss instead it will be a decrease attack debuff and a decrease speed debuff so that's a good thing that if you face against bosses this skill will do something else decrease attack decrease defense i mean decrease attack and decrease speed debuff for two turns is good not all the um, bosses can be can have their speed decreased of course so you have to take note where you use this type it will only be decreased attack for those type of bosses now when a petrification debuff is removed or expired on an enemy has a 50 cent chance of placing decreased speed debuff on that enemy for one turn so it most likely will apply to the damage dealer as they're thinking this champion will be used in arena or just a general um, content champion i feel like he's more targeted towards arena than bosses because the boss so far where i'm seeing right here is only the decrease attack and then the increase of duration of buff so so far this champion is not looking amazing this looks like a, a skill that an epic champion will do except the fact that petrification is a very scarce debuff that only a few champions have mitrala life bane that's the one i was trying to think of about that has uh, petrification and uh, when she places hex and then the meet the condition so he places it he doesn't need to meet the condition for it to land so i guess that's it, a little bit different places a 50 percent increase accuracy buff on all allies for two turns now this is what early game players need i was thinking whether this champion will be useful to early game players who are getting a free legendary for logging in seven days definitely increase accuracy is something you need when you don't have banners on your champion you've not started farming the um, spider you don't have good accuracy banners or even accuracy chests to put on your champion no good perception rules so increase accuracy just Get your accuracy where you need them to be to place debuffs on any content that you're beating whether it's dragon or clan boss right so has a 75 percent chance of stealing a any block debuff buff 
and one other random buff from each enemy. So he will steal debuffs. He will have to have enough accuracy to make that happen, of course. Then he decreases all enemies' um, turn meters by 15%. If an enemy is from this particular Telerian League, decreases the enemy's turn meter by 30% instead. Arena again. I'm still thinking they want this champion to be useful in Arena. Block, block debuff buff is not something we normally see even in Arena. People come in with stone skin instead if they are afraid of getting debuffed. So definitely will not be able to steal that. <laughs> and if he doesn't remove the block debuff buff, that means he might not be able to steal the other debuffs. The, the other buffs that they have on them. Anyways, the main thing I see about this skill is just increase accuracy. Again, this is looking more of like a skill that the epic champion will do in 2024 in raid this free champion is not gonna be amazing for you unfortunately so if you have picked up this champion please i beg you do not spend skill tomes on him i might be misjudging him too soon because we always kind of get these things wrong bro from what i'm seeing about his skills it's gonna be not gonna be amazing it's not gonna be game changing it's not gonna be like a sun wukong it's not gonna be like uh, which other ronda you know, it's not going to be one of those crazy champions where you get them or like an attack where you get them, they just change your account for the better. This is not looking like increase accuracy. Yes, useful. Petrification. Yes, arena. Useful. Decrease attack, decrease speed. Yes, useful. Boss. So there are niche uses for this champion. It's not like a using every dungeon, every clan boss, every arena. Every is not useful everywhere. It's just going to be useful in certain places where you need it. But definitely not worth spending books on this skill just for increased accuracy. You normally need it to happen once and you don't even get to use it again. So don't spend books on this. This one too, you normally need to just petrify them once, the target, and then maybe you just, you know, kill others that are less lethal, right? And then as for the increased debuff duration, it's not that amazing. All right, let's see the passive it makes everything better whenever this champion attempts to place debuff whenever this champion attempts to place a debuff still a buff decrease or a, still a buff decrease an enemy's turn meter or increase duration of a debuff on the enemy increase this champion's accuracy by 20 for each buff on that enemy so basically he just gives himself a bunch of accuracy before he can do any of this steal buff and um, place debuff or reduce the turn meter or increase duration of the debuffs. He just gives himself accuracy. They are saying this champion might not need to be built in high accuracy. So if you don't not build him in high accuracy, if he gives himself a bunch of high accuracy already, where does he use other excess accuracy then? Whenever this champion is hit, has a 40% chance of place to place a 50% decrease resistance debuff on the attacker for one turn. He really, really wants to debuff them by all means necessary, including placing a decreased resistance um, buff debuff on them, which is not very common in raid, but definitely useful. Whenever this champion is hit, a 40% chance of making it happen is good, but this is not the most useful debuff in raid either, because you need a lot of accuracy to even land it in the first place before your other allies can now take advantage of it. The chance increases to 75% chance against champions from the Larian League. All right. That's Skeletor, all hyped, good um, promotion champion, good free legendary champion. One thing you have to say about this turn is like, you cannot complain about a free gift. You can't, you don't have a right to complain about a free gift, but I'm here to tell you not to spend a lot of resources on a free gift like this. Let him use, use him in every content like a Night Ray faction, like you normally use, but save your legendary skill tomes for a more important champion Heck, a sealed drake might even be a better useful champion for your team than a skeletal if you're new to raid and you're yet to obtain her. So save your legendary skill tones for that champion instead of spending it on this champion. All right, I'll be looking forward to your feedback in the comments below. If I'm totally wrong about this champion or if you agree with me, please give me feedback and I'll be able to, you know, read and learn from you also. All right, so you do get a two-star perfect soul for this champion on day 14 and then when he switches to phase two, you can then begin to do campaign dungeons, faction wars, arena, and get more points towards unlocking a five star um, split soul for this champion. Of course, you get the two star, three star, four star, and then five star. Along with some other resources, an avatar is also there for you to pick up. And a lot of newer players will be spotting these champions as the newest avatar they just picked up. But I don't like to go for what everybody uses in the game, I like to use the unique avatars. So, 
Yeah, but if the only new one you have, go ahead and use him. And it's going to give your character, your avatar, a unique feel, I guess. All right. So that's the 13 on my list that I wanted to talk about that is happening in Raid today. What about the other champion that is released as part of this Kelotor campaign? I don't want to talk about that. Why? Because it's not accessible to me. It's not accessible. So where is it? This one. I do not want to talk about this. I'm not going to highlight this. I'm not going to say negative thing about it. But hey, a He-Man is also available for you if you get the Elite Pass. I'm not going to promote it. I'm just going to do like it. I don't see it because just like I did with this other champion that did just like this Elite Pass, we skipped her and now she's nuking us in the arena. And so he is also going to be skipped. A good champion, yes, but not for the free-to-play um, players. All right. For more better important things to talk about, Fusion Calendar Breakdown is here. It was released earlier yesterday. I think it was leaked or something, but I just wanted to wait until they share it officially in their discourse before I talk about it to show you what I'll be doing on the Fusion, basically to see if it's the same as ever or something has changed or how we can even make it better or whether this one is going to be easier because it's a Fragment Fusion, it's supposed to be a little bit easier. So on the F Fusion news, the first thing I noticed is that today is not the day to start this Fusion. Why? Because Dungeon Diver starts tomorrow, so we're going to have to wait, hold on in that Fire Knight farming until Dungeon Divers kicks up tomorrow. That's when the Fusion officially starts for me, 26th. <laughs> Yes, we have to play this waiting game. So, I really thought a champion chase will start tomorrow because they are doing this 1 plus 1 event. But you can see no champion chase is starting on the 26th. Not even for the next 3 days where the um, 1 plus 1 event is going on. So, that 1 plus 1 event is just on its own. That you can just pull and pull engines and get a 1 plus 1. It doesn't coincide with anything else in this fusion. I just wanted to check that. Alright then maybe there will be a different champion chase that doesn't have to do with it or i mean a, what do you call it now a champion chase or a summon rush that coincides with that but definitely not one on this fusion calendar that means i'll not be pulling my ancient shard when there is no fusion advantage for it so a lot of players are still undecided whether they want to go for this champion or not you should be able to decide by now based on the amount of free resources and energy you have in game and resources you've saved up for energy for um, silver and other things but i'm going for it because why not i do have the resources artifact announcement will start kick off after this um fire knights has farmed you can go in there and cleanse some gear that you've been saving in the inbox and overflowing that's when to do it the gear to four and eight as usual six star gear to eight um five star gear to four that's the easiest way to complete this type of artifact announcement event it's not about taking gear to 16 or well, except if you have some champions already at 15 15 15 then you have 20 30 million saver you can do it but i tend to take a lot of gear to 4 and 8 before i even think about taking gears to 16. but recently there are new champions out of 10 who have been farming masteries and then you know i'm waiting to build them up take their gear to max so i might be able to do that during this artifact announcement that is coming up spider will coincide with this dungeon divers one so as usual one dungeon divers two dungeon events so in this case fire knight and spider will be the one that will help you complete this dungeon divers one and it's always a long one the dungeon divers are getting longer and longer every day and we are getting scared that one day we will not have enough energy to complete a dungeon divers but it's happening we finish a fire knight in one day two days but we finish a spider in one day two days the dungeon diver still has a long way to go so the rewards even at the end milestone of those dungeon divers are not that exciting anymore. If you're going to keep pushing the goalposts, at least put some five legendary skill tomes <laughs> at the end of those dungeon divers to make it worth those using their gems to go crazy. I've been saving, where have been bricks been, where are the videos? I've been saving my resources. I'm talking silver and gems, energy to start off today with this strong fusion and that's why I'm recording this video today. <laughs> All right. I'm ready to start spending resources now. Saved up energy though, that I've not picked up throughout this time that I've saving it. All right, Classic Arena 1 is standard. Classic Arena 2 is standard. No Classic Arena 3. So that's different. Or normally we'll have only two Classic Arenas. But we do have one Dungeon Divers 1. We do have one Dungeon Divers 2. And we also have Dungeon Divers 3. That's standard. Champion Training one 
Yes, one is already going on right now. I'll talk about this champion training that is going on right now. It has a special reward that you might want to take a closer look at and see whether you want to go all the way for, to the end for it. So champion training, there are two of it. And from what I see right here now, you do have total of 110 fragments to pick up this champion. You can see right here. 110 fragments. Why am I not counting that 20? Because that 20 is not reasonable. You shouldn't rely on winning leaderboard to get a 20 fragment. No. Stick with that 110 fragments. That's all you should aim for. So this gives you an idea that you can skip out on one event that has 5 fragments, another event that has 5 fragments, and then focus on the entire 100 um, fragments. So. It might be that you don't like this fire knight that is going on right now <laughs> and you skip five fragments right here basically i'm saying you can't skip 10 fragments from this fusion event that is going on right now and it doesn't seem like champion training is it doesn't seem like yo dungeon divers you know how we always complain that dungeon divers have five fragments we don't need or it's too hard dungeon divers 2 or dungeon divers 3 could be one that you can just forget about the the um frag five fragments in there and pick up only 100 fragments from all other events so basically if you're done with your ice golem you start you stop farming this ice this and dungeon divers don't keep going you wait until it expires you wait for dragon to launch you farm your dragon dungeon divers 2 ends you don't even care about using dungeon divers 2 to complete dragon you stop farming the dragon once you get the five fragments in there so this dungeon divers 2 and dungeon divers 3 might be the two that most player wants to skip out on but take note this dungeon divers one is the longest one so maybe take a look at this one to see if it's the one you want to skip out on basically you can skip out on two events that have five five fragments each please do not try to skip out on an event that has 15 fragments like a summon rush or like a champion chase right there are two summoning events right champion chase does have 15 fragments uh, summon rush does also have 15 fragments i wouldn't recommend you skip out on these two except you can just pick up pick up the five fragments from each and forget about the 10. that's something most players might be able to do if they split the fragments that way we'll have to wait until we see um, whether champion chase will have five and ten fragments separately why summon rush will also have five and ten fragments separately this might help you make the decision whether you want to go for only one summon event pick up five fragments from one of them and call it a day so I think the dungeon divers are more of a threat than the summoning events but depends whether you have shards or you have energy whichever one just take note that you can skip out on 10 fragments so back in the day we used to win five five fragments from classic arena but these days the only extra fragments available for this is in the champion chase and in the champion training so it's not something that most players will be able to win this extra fragment so we don't see it right here i'll just cross it off it's not something that anybody should try to aim for because it might make you but hey if you're able to get it done if nobody is pushing in your tournament group congrats to you then but it's not something we can add to the math anymore in 2024 fusions it has changed all right there's one more thing i wanted to take a look at this is the fusion calendar that i just saw right now and we did find ways a loophole right here where we can skip out on two events that's why i always go over this fusion calendar to see whether there's a way we can you know use our resources better to complete the fusion all right what next the next thing that is going on right now in raid that i wanted to take a look at is this glowing portal right here it's white if you click on it it says that there's a summoning pool event going on and this summoning pool event always has this headline champion available for you this time around is volcanoes and fumo they are the um, faction unity champions who have these special advantages when they are champions from similar factions at the same are in the same battle with them and you can take a look at his skills for the better but what i always encourage newer players to take a look at better instead of the legendaries focus your eye on the epics because this is most likely one you will get from this summoning portal event so don't try to aim for the legendaries you'll be very disappointed always try to put your eye on this so if you've been looking for an allure this is your chance because this gives you specific chance of getting these epics from summoning this um, prism shard which is obtainable from two events that are going on right now so allure is the one that catches my attention for newer players and then of course um, umbril enchantress cannot be forgotten for her role in the hydra and general dungeon content where she locks out the enemies for a very long time 
and then um, our HP based damage dealer Magna when you don't have crazy legendaries to do the job in the arena he goes crazy and I think that's about it this champion also shines in faction wars because he's one of the few champions who have a decrease defense AOE decrease defense which a lot of players do not know of they kind of think it's only Tyrell and Stagnite who he actually has decrease defense although he brings nothing else on that same decrease defense maybe that's why he's not so popular but there are some faction events that is essential he is the only one that can be helpful in when they say bring a degree events along in those fire knight events in a few that i've seen he also has a double hit on an a1 right so definitely a champion that i've used once in a while in those special fire knight tournaments or in those internal stages so those are the three that you should work out watch out for oh i forgot about one hp born and freeze champion Achak the Wendering is one that definitely helped me in the early game to get through the spider 20 yes yeah, spider 20 he is there for this freeze just put this skill on um high priority and he will always be freezing the the spider links for sure not burning them freeze 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 that's what you need from this champion depends on the condition that is met in the battle he might play such reborn instead and of course a bunch of thumb meter and healing based on the right condition do check out his passive i do have a champion guide about him definitely worth checking out all right those are the champions that are available right here what events would you have to do to get this um prism shard summoning to get any of those epics the first one is the champion training tournament that is going on right now Take note, the fusion is starting officially for me tomorrow. But if you have any energy saved up that you do not want it to just be piling up right here, you can start spending it in champion training in campaign right now because this champion training is quite long, right? So you can also spend it in fire night, but I'd rather wait for tomorrow to start the fire night. Today, it's all about champion training. I'm not trying to hit for the 11,000 mark today. No, we can wait for tomorrow to. I just want to use my energy that is capped out. That's where I'm going to spend the energy in champion training. Or I go back to the menu and farm masteries for the champion I've been doing all weekend. So 6,350 points is the number of points you need to get these fragments. And yeah, first place, 10 extra fragments. Second place, 5 extra fragments. But like I said, this is what I have my eye on. I have been so lucky with this source and this um, prison charge summoning that I will definitely be going for this one. In the middle of a fusion, you are supposed to just hit this 6,350 6, points and stop. That's where you should stop. But because I'm so, you know, enticed by this premium shard event, I'll have to go the extra mile. Hey, if you're new to raid, do not try to hit this fourth <laughs> 11,000 mark because it will hinder your chances of finishing that fire knight and that spider and that dungeon divers that is going on during this fusion. So this, this, this likely is from players who are not going for the fusion. So if you feel like you don't like this legendary champion, you're not going for the fusion, this champion training is also has something for you at the tip top right here for you to pick up. One summoning for that prism shard event and maybe get a legendary or focus your eye on the epics that I showed you earlier. It also has another second event that will also give you 40 prism crystals and that is the sand devil necropolis. This sand devil necropolis event clearly has the prism shard. Um, icon but the champion training does not have the prism shard icon so most players will think this champion training has nothing for them so take a look at it it does have prism shard they should add it to the icon so players can know just like looking at it from this screen so, all right so i think i've covered everything that is happening in raid right now and it's a lot it's a lot but you have to choose what you want to go for and choose what you want to ignore i'm going in there doing my dailies doing my advanced quests and spending all my rest of energy in campaign finishing um preparing food for tomorrow champion training when i go more crazier for that event and that's all that is happening in raid right now i hope i did not miss out on anything important that was announced earlier but yeah that's the news are you going for that one plus one ancient event are you close to mercy or would you be going for this prison shard event in the middle of a fusion are you still one of those who still feel like this fusion is not even worth it or you are going hard for him because it's a fragment fusion and it's supposed to be easier from the fusion calendar do you think it's still easy or do you think they added some you know hidden secrets that i did not find in this in this video i think it's pretty straightforward i hope but the dungeon divers when it starts tomorrow we'll see whether the points are inflated again or normal and then don't forget you can skip two events from here which is kind of nice right so it's not one of those ones where you cannot skip anything and it has a hero spot or a, a card flipping event attached to it right so yeah that's all i have to share with you guys sorry i could not put all this into two three different videos i wanted to put it all into one and yeah 
let me know in the comments what you think about all these events going crazy around right now in racial events i'll see you guys in the next one don't forget to like and subscribe by the time you're watching this i'm probably live on twitch playing raid or some other random game later guys